YouTube, what is going on? It is your boy Keezy. It ain't easy being Keezy. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about more underappreciated streetwear brands of 2020. This is like the fourth, maybe fifth installment to this series. You'll probably see it in the thumbnail. But with all that said, let's get it. So starting off this video, uh, a couple disclaimers, um, well not really a disclaimer for the first one, but I just want to say thank you to everybody that uh, really watched this series so far. This is like the fourth or fifth installment to the series of underappreciated streetwear brands. And the first video really happened to pop off and quite a few people messaged me about continuing this series, so we're going to do it. So the actual disclaimer that I am going to say is that I haven't purchased from a majority of these brands. Some of them I have, some of them I have not. But the basis of how I go about choosing some of the brands that people send me, because people send me a lot of stuff, and oftentimes a lot of the brands get very repetitive, if I were to say the least. A lot of them look the same, it's just like two t-shirts, two hoodies, same logo on all four of them, and like that's the brand. Not dissing them in any way, but I don't really talk about those unless I know like a lot of meaning behind it. And also I try to look for things that I also would purchase too, because it only makes sense for me to talk about things that I potentially would like or do like, instead of telling you to buy things and showing you these brands that I can care less about. Oh, and as always, if you have a brand that you want me to know about, put the link in the comments or put their Instagram handle. It's way easier for me to just click on it or copy and paste to go on Instagram and find it because again, there are some times people send me stuff, they just give me the name, I go on Google, actually a lot of the time, and I look for it, I can't find anything on the brand. But then once they send me the links, I'm like, oh, okay, well this, this brand just didn't pop up. I don't know what it was. Cause I, I, want, I want to see it. I genuinely want to see it. I like to just say, I just make cool stuff. And that's it, pretty much. I just make cool shit. Some of, the, some of my favorite dad's artists, they talk about the concept of perfect time. That is the reason why it should be functional before we think about anything else. Because anything else to me is, it's an ego thing. Okay, so the first brand that we got up to talk about is called Agnes Cruel. Instagram is agnescruel.us. This was actually referred from Yahtzee. Yahtzee happened to be on one of the, on Alex Zavalos' live like a couple weeks ago. I can't remember how long ago it was now. And we were just talking about streetwear brands. He happened to bring up this uh, brand right here. And judging by their Instagram, it looks like the main attraction for the brand right now actually focuses more on the bag. I mean, they, it looks like they do t-shirts as well. But really, I think that this brand was pretty noteworthy because of the bag the bag is sick like the shaping of the bag not only that they on the straps it looks like those are shotgun shell holsters i do come from a family that is very into shooting my father has always been into shotguns and he actually won an olympic medal in a non-olympic year way back in the day i think this was before i was born but i think it's really interesting that he's incorporating the shotgun shells into the accessory or this bag and also making it look good on top of that um, I will say, as someone that has shot many times in my life and going to the gun range and stuff like that, and seeing the shell holsters being so spread out probably doesn't really make sense uh, because, I mean, typically if you're hunting or if you're actually using this for the purpose of shooting, usually you have a whole bag of shells that you would use. In fact, it would be, kind of be a little bit more time consuming for you to take out the shell out of each holster with them so spread out like that. My guess is to make it more efficient would be to have them closer together, but I think for the look of the bag, it makes it look way better that way um, and it looks really sick man i actually want one of these bags myself i don't really know how much they cost i'm very curious of whether or not the shells that they put in there are either real shells number one if it's not a real shell does it serve a purpose i'm thinking that maybe it could be like some kind of cartridge very similar to what people used to use when they smoke weed they would put like those little uh those non-smelly containers uh, but but it would be disguised as like a like an arizona can or a Mountain Dew can. I'm wondering if that is like the same thing as this. That would be really cool if that would be the same thing. So the last couple things I will say um, about this bag specifically is that the shaping of it looks like the monogram canvas box bag, the LV Virgil collaboration. I think it was like the first season that had rolled out with um, LV and Virgil, but the sizing of it and like the, how kind of boxy it is, it looks very similar. So in that aspect you can use that as like an alternative if, if you if you're looking for that look but you're also looking for something like streetwear oriented 
this is a really good brand to go to. Again, I'm, I apologize, I don't know much about the brand. It was just kind of introduced to me through a live and I thought it was really good to mention it here. But if anyone is really that interested and does happen to end up getting their hands on something like this, please, please report back to this video and I wanna know what the process was. Did you email him and then like you did the transaction that way or are they not for sale? I, I wanna know, it's, I'm very curious. I mean, even his following right now, he only has 520 followers on Instagram, really not that much. Uh, deserves a lot more, I would say. You know, the time spent to, to make an item like this is it's honestly a, a really nice piece. So I am holding in my hand this awesome box right here. You guys are probably wondering, oh, it's another sneaker. Actually, it is not. It is actually a pair of shorts. All right, by talking about this next brand, I might get like, gas in the comments especially from the people that are from the bay but i apologize the next brand we're going to talk about is trillist and I, I believe the official name is like trillist establishment but people more know it for trillist or i more know it for trillist now trillist is from the bay christian and quinn if you're watching this i totally apologize but i've asked christian many times as to who owns the brand and i i keep forgetting who owns it i'm pretty sure quinn you're the Q, right? Q, you're the one that owns this, all right? If you're watching this, I don't know if you are, but uh, shout out to you if you do own this and or maybe it's owned by more than one person. Please educate me for one last time so I can remember in the comment section. Uh, but this brand is noteworthy not only because it's homegrown and it's from the same soil of the, as the Bay Area, but more so because the shorts, I'm pretty sure, now I haven't purchased any Trillis establishment myself, nor have I bought the shorts. But the shorts that are very popular, which I'm showing right here, are the multi-teamed shorts. And some of them have like all of Jordan's uh, teams that he ever played in, all combined into one pair of shorts. And it actually has like a little bit of hype around it. And to my understanding, Trillis establishment releases you know, their product in lower quantity, of course, kind of creating that scarcity for their product. And then of course the hype kind of falls right behind it. But as of late, Trillist has been killing it the past like year and a half to two years, I think. Then again, I don't, I don't know when it started, but as far as I've heard of it, I'm pretty sure it's in the past year because of Christian and getting to know Q and everybody behind the uh, Undead Stock event and stuff like that. So you can really tell that they put a lot of hard work in into what they do. And to make shorts like that, that's not an easy thing to do, okay? To, to, to get all of those different types of shorts and blend it all into create one pair of shorts. And also more recently, I checked Grailed not too long ago because since their product is kind of more exclusive and also there's like a scarcity to it and they tend to sell out really fast and people line up for this stuff. You can actually find their products on Grailed. People resell them. Some of the resale, not gonna lie, it's kind of high. Some of these people are selling them for like 130, 250, 260. So, I mean, that really speaks volumes for your brand, especially if you are a newer streetwear brand and you happen to drop something and the people automatically just run to Grailed or other third party reselling sites and like kind of bump up your prices. There's kind of like a general understanding there that there's a little bit of, uh, you know, exclusivity to your product and also some value that's kind of building up for it. So, I thought that was kind of noteworthy to talk about for the brand. And also, what was noteworthy is that Ben Baller actually shouted them out multiple times. And also, Ben Baller, to my understanding, has worn the shorts themselves and like set it on video straight on their Instagram as well. So I mean that's like a huge like step in the right direction when it comes to owning a brand. So before I move on to the next brand here, Q or Christian if you're watching this or anybody else that knows about this brand and who's who's the owners of this, I, I want to know for the last time who the real owners are because I keep forgetting. Okay, so just inform me by bringing up this topic. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on. I know. Okay, so speaking about hype and a little bit of exclusivity and how hard it is to purchase products sometimes, this next brand we're going to talk about is Luke Vicious. Now, I only know that this is difficult sometimes to buy some of the stuff on his website because I speak to Derek. So Derek, if you're watching this, huge shout out to you. One of the only people I know that talk a lot about Luke Vicious, but I will say in the past two videos for this series that we've done for unappreciated streetwear brands, there's been like two or three people that have shouted out Luke Vicious and I was like, all right, you know what? I'll, I'll kind of talk about it. Now, please understand that I have not purchased from Luke Vicious. I only know it because of Derek's association to it and always telling me about it. And then also my association of just looking at the website of what they have for sale. So outside looking in perspective, I will tell you right now, if you are looking for boxy fitting things, this, this is, is your site. site. And also more one of one pieces. So like one of one slash really boxy fitting 
vintage t-shirts this is going to be your website to go to now the prices are you know they're fair for what they are some of them are a little high in my opinion but then again i don't really buy that much vintage to know some of these t-shirts go for like 90 bucks i do believe some of them even go down to 60 some of them even go up upwards of 150 dollars and also the jackets can go upwards of like 350 bucks give or take but again like i said in the very first episode of this underappreciated streetwear brand series that we're doing here on my channel is that one of one pieces and vintage and reworked workwear it's just it's just hot it's trending everybody is into it when i say a lot of people i'm talking about a lot of people Seconds, 30 seconds. seconds. No running out, no running out. What are you doing? No, 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 you don't want to lose your belt. Come on. One foot in, at least one foot in. Yeah, don't. Don't punch it. Okay. All right, all right. Call it. Call it. Call it. Say you want. Huh? Say you Say you want. You want. Okay, you want. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people just love vintage and archive right now. It's it's the in thing. All right, more and more and more DIY one of one brands. Uh, this next brand we got up is called Cody Phillips. And this brand was actually recommended from someone with the screen name of Xavier from one of the previous videos. I thought this was interesting uh, because of these pants right here that I'm showing you. These are called the Dial Cycle Number no. 2 Basics. I mean, the price is what it is, it's about $180, but they definitely remind me of the Helmet Lang bondage cargos, which also Vuja Day happened to make their bondage cargo version, which are amazing, amazing by, by the, the way. way. They are fire. I really want a pair, but I checked Grailed, and the prices are like $800. People are charging like $600. I don't know how much Vuja Day ended up retailing those at. I really am curious of what the retail price was because I don't remember catching it on the website when they sold it during those times. I don't know if people are jacking up those prices on Grailed or maybe they're just letting them go at the same price that it was sold for, I'm not sure. This could potentially be a little bit of an alternative if you visit Cody Phillips because this is only $180. So if you want that bondage cargo look with your black pants, you could check out this website. And this is another site that I would like someone to purchase it and tell me how it goes. Like if you like it enough, cop it. I'm not telling you to, but if you happen to, come back to this video let me know how it goes because I'm, I'm just super curious. You know what I'm saying? My only complaint though with this pair of pants is uh, the pockets and the straps happen to be a different color. And it's a little like if they made the pockets all black to match the pants, that would make sense. And then leave the straps the same color, like an off gray or like a charcoal color. That would be really cool. But again, if they made it all black, whew, these would be, whew, these would be crazy. These would be crazy, crazy. It would probably be crazy enough where I would have them in hand right now to talk about it, but you know, that's not the case. So anyways, if you're looking for a really good alternative when it comes to bondage cargo pants, this is a very, very, very good uh, viable option for bondage cargos. I, ca I haven't found any other like cheaper alternatives when it comes to bondage cargos. I mean, considerably Vuja Day is cheaper than Helmet Lang, but even being cheaper than Helmet Lang is still it's expensive. expensive. <laughs> Like 600 dollars for pants. I'm buying Ibisu. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy the number one specials and or the premium Ibisus from Japan. And I probably wouldn't buy bondage cargos, just me personally. But until I satisfy that itch and then come back around and find my way to buy some bondage cargos, maybe this might be an option. Or I'll just go with Vuja Day, which is another brand that I happened to mention in a prior video. All right, so I know I only talked about these specific bondage pants, and I don't even know if he's titling it that. He also makes a ton of other reworked uh, vintage pieces. Now these pants right here, the bottoms number something, are sick. These are sick. And it looks like a straight fit. I mean, I'm sure it's probably a little bit more exclusive. There's probably only a couple of them made. But this one, it looks like he did a really good job. Anyways, without saying too much uh, about this brand, um, I would say check it out for yourself and kind of give your own judgment on this. And also without repeating myself too much, this is another type of site that seems to be popping up a lot on Instagram right now. Uh, just through fashion in general, whatever fashion outlets that you look for 
online of people reselling things, whether it's sneakers and clothing and old OG brands, archive pieces. A lot of these type of websites are starting to pop up these days. I mean, it's getting as popular as how Supreme was in like 2018. So that just kind of gives you an idea. All right, and saving the best for last in my humble opinion, but the last brand is going to be Uniform Studios. Now I know if people have been following me for more than like even just four or five months, I preach Uniform Studios a lot. So maybe this part can be a little boring for some, but for those who are new to my channel, I would definitely say Uniform Studios is a very underappreciated uh, streetwear brand. And also maybe I'm biased because I know the owners, they're really chill guys, really cool guys. My understanding also Uniform Studios has great customer service and also they make some pretty well thought out pieces. And of course, much of their previous and maybe even current aesthetic can have a lot of taken inspiration from things like Fear of God and what have you. Un we understand that, but this is a very good alternative when it comes to buying boxy fitting t-shirts, boxy fitting hoodies um, that also could be branded and more so unique to their own uh, brand mantra and what have you. But just adding on to that, it's a good brand for like everyday basics that aren't like crazy loud pieces with huge graphics on them. Usually they got like little tiny small graphics to go with it uh, or just like their name, Uniform Studios, uh, box tees, wash, acid wash t-shirts. And also I can't preach this enough, but the black uh, like box fitting previous uh, hoodie that they made where I'll show you some videos or some footage here of it I wear that thing like every day man I wear it so much that it smells bad and I need to wash it I should probably do that today you know what it is that I like about that hoodie is that it's the material on the hoodie the hoodie material on that thing is like literally putting on a pillow I don't know why it's so comfortable it is a very understated comfortable boxy fitting black hoodie that I own that also comes in gray that sometimes people let them go on other sites online as well but uh, yeah I like it also it's homegrown it's from Los Angeles the guys are really chill check them out um, I'm not gonna say too much more about it because I've talked about them in like seven videos that I've done in the past like I'm not sure how to say this like correctly but I've seen uniform studios really basically cook from the beginning like no followers like nobody knows what uniform studios is all the way up until you know 12,000 followers on instagram um as a clothing brand and, and it, it's not backed by anything else it's, this brand is purely backed by the fact that people like the product you know what i'm saying like it's not tied to a youtube channel it's not tied to a rapper that happened to wear it one time or shouted them out it really is based on the fact that people saw it on instagram to my understanding uh, liked it, ordered it, purchased it, and they're happy customers, and people keep coming back to it. That in itself speaks volumes as a brand. You know what I'm saying? So, all right, I'm gonna save this commentary for the last bit of this video. And what I wanted to say, typically, what draws my attention is the brand philosophy or the story of a brand. Now, of course, a lot of the brands I brought up here today, in fact, if not all of them, besides Uniform Studios, maybe, and Trillist, out of all of these, I was purely looking at it for the product and I wasn't looking at it for the brand philosophy or the story, but I am more drawn into a story or a brand philosophy than I am about quality. I know that I know that sounds a little strange, but you know when it comes to streetwear, people don't buy into quality. Not really, because some of the most cherished pieces, even for something like a Pyrex hoodie, from way back in the day a pyrex hoodie is printed on champion hoodies but yet i still cherish it enough to put it up back here for you to see right and not to knock champion but i mean you know people used to get made fun of for wearing champion back in the day and you know champion is isn't always known for having the craziest quality in the world but it's the history behind it it was the narrative it was the story it was virgil that drew me in to purchase this product later on right by judging websites that i see of these brands, I go straight to the about. I, if I don't know about it already, I go straight to the about. And usually if there's nothing written in the about, that already kind of says something about it, you know? And or if they do have something in the about page and it's not really well thought out and it's just kind of like this anarchy type of label or what have you, non-conformity type of brand, 
Those ones, again, like I just mentioned, I just kind of skip on them. You know what I'm saying? Even if the graphics and stuff like that look good, still doesn't it doesn't hit home for me but if the about page is fire and i can get the understanding of it within the first couple sentences and it's something that i can vibe with then i will take a way deeper look into the rest of the website and i i probably sound hypocritical because the, again the brands i talked about today don't really resemble that 110 percent but moving forward, if you want to know what I look for to mention your brand or someone else's brand on the channel, that's what I look for. About page first, then I look at your clothing. Unless the clothing is something super crazy, like those bags that I showed you on the first brand that we talked about here today. If it's something like that, okay, that drew my attention. But it really, it's brand philosophy, story, I gotta see that first. Anyways, you get the point. So, closing this video out. Make sure you guys and girls keep it locked right here for all your latest information from clothing, music, to culture. It's your boy Keezy. I'm out. Peace. You want to do, and it's just going to take a minute, but it's going to work out. Like, like if you try to cut corners and you put costumes on to do shit, yeah, you just, you going to get straight, but at what cost, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And how you feel. When you do this shit for you, 100% for you, you can grind and stay up for five or six days and not really be tired because it's for you. You. you.